Welcome back. We are having our second conversation for this morning. And as we mentioned, we are sitting down with the mayoral candidates of the Orange Walk municipality. Here with us, we have the mayoral candidate for the People's United Party, Ladrick Shepard. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, guys, and thanks for having me on the show this morning. How are you pleasure. doing after uh, a long day of uh, campaigning and uh, nominating mm -hmm. yesterday? Well, like I said, I just mentioned to you guys, it's no joke. You know, I'm um, in the vicinity of the prime minister. So after, after that nomination day, um, we went out with him again to take a small little tour of some people that he, he needed to touch base with. And that's how we finished up uh, meeting at least about 10 people. Then from there, we went and have a small snack. From mm -hmm. there, we went home. So it, this is fun. This is what we do. Yeah. As, as, as politicians, we have to get used to it. And uh, we love what, how, how it goes for us. A regular day on the job, yeah? Yep, yep, that's it. Well, uh, Ladrick, let's, let's get a general introduction to who you are as an individual and a politician. Mm, it's, it's stacked up, but let's, yeah. let's, let's start <laughs> off. Um, born and, and raised up in a raindrop. My mom and my dad, Miss Marion mm -hmm. Torres, and my, my dad, Ladrick Shepard. Um, attended um, San Francisco School, Technical High School. I spent um, at least eight years at BSI ESR. And after that, I went to work at Center Cable Network for 16 years. Mm -hmm. It's there when I decided more likely to, to enter politics. But prior to um, entering to politics, um, I've always been an activist um, dealing with youths and sports. I have a God gifted talent to just grab a mic and entertain crowd. Um, mm. You know, people say I love my voice. I don't know, but um, <laughs> listening to it sometimes, you know, I don't. You know, nobody likes to listen to their own voice, but other people likes it. Um, that's that's what I do. So before, prior to that, I I, I managed to be an, an announcer for horse racing. I think I'm the only horse racing announcer in the entire country of Belize. Oh yes. Um, yes, I do in Boom or in Rock and in Cayo. I do do horse racing announcing. I also um, added to that, I'm also the chairman of the F uh, Marine Drug Football Association. Um, got elected in 2016, so in that aspect, I have, I'm in charge of all the football games, the youth games in Marine Drug, that's on my portfolio as well too. Um, then getting into politics started off in 2011. I had to run as a, um, about 13 of us, a convention, and I ended up winning with, on that slate that was on Honorable Kevin Bernard now. He was, he won as mayor. Um, from there, we, I started my political career. We won in 2012, mm -hmm. um, dominated the polls, getting the most votes in 2015 as well, dominated the polls, getting the most votes. 2018, dominated again, getting the most votes, and then decided that I think it was time for me to step up to the plate. And, and I, it was encouraged by different people, and also one of the most person that encouraged me to step up to the plate was the Prime Minister due to the fact that I'm I live I was a block away from him and we and, and we're always beside on I also campaigned for him as well too as one of the senior campaigners for entire in entire constituency both in Orange Rock and in San Esteban. So um, I was prepped and I am also one of his greeters when it when it comes to the Prime Minister itself. I go to where I attended San Francisco schools one of his polling station number fifty three. I stand and that ground and guard that ground totally for the Prime Minister. So this the, the politics for me has been there prior mm -hmm. to entering mm -hmm. as, as mayor in 2021 when I won um, in 2021. And, I, and as I said, I told everybody, the people in the public, that when I get in there, I was going to work. And that is what I've done from since I've got in there. You are incumbent mayor. And aside from that, uh, it's clear that you, you, you're a man of many roles, many hats. You, you spoke about so many different things in, in just a matter of two minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, after that introduction and, and all that you mentioned, uh, the focus, of course, this morning is uh, your role in municipal government. Um, I guess I just want to ask you immediately, do you think that you have done a great job in the last term? I'll go back and tell you I have our that sporting mentality that I have is being aggressive. I think that everything is a challenge for me. And I, I told that I'm telling everybody I don't like to lose. Mm -hmm. So in that aspect, um, working in working hard and working like what but my mentor and one of my words that I use is hard work will always pay off. Because it has to come back to what I was doing. I, I it, let me go back and reflect back on when I was doing all these things, because you said it, you know this is a lot. People always admire when someone someone goes out and do. 
like in for instance, um, I said I didn't mention that I, I, I due to the fact that I'm also in charge of football, I also own like four football teams, U10, U13, U15. These are investments that you do and these things cost money. So when I got in, when I was a counselor, I know the counselor fee is only nine hundred dollars. I totally invested it back into it and, and then I Mayor Bernard was there as well and said, You know something, I'm see you working and you're in I was totally in charge of my portfolio was in charge of the youths and I invested in that and that's that's the that's that catapulted me to where I am mm -hmm. because people were seeing me or they were hearing my voice as I announced her and they're seeing the work that I was doing. So I always make sure that the youth had a chance and I, I can I can go back and reflect about a couple of people that are huge people in sports right now that I gave them opportunity sending some of these kids as you know, giving them a making sure that they have a, a chance that they, they would never go to high school and I saw that the potential what they had in sports and gave them that chance. So those are the things that, that I was doing to um to make sure that I am where I am. Mm -hmm. What were some of the challenges that you faced during the last term as mayor to accomplish some of the plans and ideas that uh, you and your council state came in with? All right. The challenge is, remember we're in 2021, we were, we were under our central government. UDP. So, and, and from 2012 to 2018, 20, 20, 20, yeah. mm -hmm. we're on a UDP central government. Then 2021, we're on a PUP central government. Uh -huh. Let me go back to where we where we started off in 2012 to where we are. There, that were where the challenges. I I clearly recall that um, when we took over our office, um, then Mayor Bernard had to tell us you guys would not be getting paid because we don't have enough money. Things were really rough. It was hard. We stood about six six months without getting paid. We showed that they, he could have set off this financial status for the council. Then from there we went for months. So that showed me that if you are willing enough to sacrifice what you are getting for the benefit of the employees at this council, you can do more because they see that gratitude, that love that you have for them. Now, um, when the, the challenges that we have, I knew for a fact for the past nine years, some of the challenges, so when I got in office in 2021, the challenges, we didn't have enough equipment. Okay. Equipment was a major factor. We didn't have greater roller, water truck, stuff like this that we can use, garbage compactor truck that mm -hmm. we can use as set for it. My managers that manage the, the council didn't even have um, the right equipment for them to do the work. So these are the things that, that, that challenged us and I, and I went really uh, um, fast to make sure we get these equipment so that we can have better job done for the council. So as a result of getting those equipment, what were you able to accomplish in terms of uh, the infrastructure, on the infrastructure side, and uh, if given uh, another chance to be in that seat, what is there yet to be done that residents are saying we also need? Well, I'll tell you, you know what people want, streets. And, and, and then we, Arindu Arc um, is, very, is very low line. And you know for a fact that when it comes to the weather, and rainy season comes in. Especially we with had the to river. Change, yes, we had to change over 700 culverts in Arindu Arc. And, and, and these things, very, it's costly. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had to get it done prior to because people are asking for that. So, and then exactly those equipment that I, that I, that I bought, now I can do my own work. I do the manual paving. I, that you, if you can see our manifesto um, prior to in 2021, we said we're going to be we're going to be paving 75 streets. We have passed that we are at 78. You just imagine, just throwing it out there. Imagine if East Council would do 75 streets for the three terms. Then I think the whole entire Belize would be paved to totally. That's how aggressive I, as a council, we are. But you have to give credit to the people that are there. The first thing when I got in office in 2012 and um, 2021. Um, we, we sat down with the entire crew and then we, we, I managed to win over, remember th those crew were Kevin Bernard's team. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is Logic Mad Bull Shepherd's team. So we had to sit down with the crew and, and make they understand that now they're working for me now. And I need the same, um, same stuff that they were doing to, for Kevin, for me. And that's what, how I managed to win over the entire council so that we can continue the work. What happened with the with the municipalities push for accountability and transparency where financial reports are concerned it is an expectation from residents in all municipalities that their municipal leaders will report uh, their their financial standing their expenses their income when you go on the town council's website there is an option there for you to view these financial reports However, there seems to be some 
dates missing and some months missing in those reports. In fact, when you go on the uh, website, the last report you see was from September of 2023. So there are some months missing, missing. leading up to March. We're going into March now. And then it's not the entirety of, of, of 2023 that's there. Neither is it the entirety of 2022 that's there in terms of the reports. What happened there? Well, I did get back and see what happened, but I've, I'm quite sure we are we are an open policy. You can you can walk right into the council. Feel free to ask for it if you dare to want to know exactly what we're doing. But again, it goes back to it. Um, if anybody's going to be um, bracing us and telling us about that. The work speed for itself, and like I said, the investment in the town that we have, we have all done. Again, the financial are always there, so you can give, contact me or you can contact my administrator who's approachable, the, and we will, we will get you exactly what you want to see exactly. So that's not how, we, how we work in our range rock. We're not close to nothing, and the residents know that that's the reason why if there was any negative vibes or anything, you would have heard something out there long time oh you have heard the orange rock town council is mismanaging the money oh, they're, they're stealing these you, you will not hear that because all we have been doing in this council is work i've told you again i have that mentality that when you work for the people and you get the job done and it's a basic thing that they're asking for pick up their garbage make sure you pave their streets clean the drain these are the things that people expect from you right. as a council if you can get those parties together then the work is easy you know, you, you, you come off to be very opti optimistic, uh, Mr. Shepard, and I think that that is something that, is, that has probably uh, helped you in your campaign, uh, 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 your charisma. But I want to ask you as well about um, uh, continuing on, on the path of where Paul was speaking as it relates to financials. Uh, one of the points that we have been discussing is the autonomy of municipal government. Um, as you would know, the municipality uh, in Orange Walk is poised to have the support of the Prime Minister and, and many other PUP uh, area reps as well. Uh, how important is it for the Orange Walk uh, City Council to remain autonomous and not rely completely on central government? Well. Again, you, you want to make sure that your numbers are, are set. Um, all the collections that we're doing, like I said, um, property tax has been a little challenge, but we're doing mm -hmm. a lot. What I do as when I went in is that um, I realized that if I can communicate with the residents, this is what I did when I went in. I, I, I spoke to at least 10 residents in one area and told them, if you can pay your property tax in advance, I can pave your street for you. And, oh, that was so nice. I said, yes, go ahead and oh. do that. So I have different mentalities. So I can tell you about 10 streets that were paved by the residents coming in and paying their property tax so that, so that they help. And, and, and again, when you have a council that is working, that is when people are coming in. And again, I, have, I can tell you about at least 100 people that have texted me asking for a small, you know, you know Mayor, I can't pay all my property tax for you, but if you give me a little discount, I'll see who I could pay all. And if you, if you can give me that, I guarantee you I'll pay all. So those are the means and ways that you're doing. Yes, I'll tell you that there is, you, you know, that the financial is kind of a little difficult. Central government, yes, is help, but this is the key. I've said that in my portion as mayor, and I have three representatives that is in my constituency, Honorable Kevin Bernard, the Prime Minister, and Honorable Monje Cervantes. When we combine our work together and do as much as we can, who we know that is the resident, and that is what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. It has been so nice for me. I've, I've said that I'm the little brother, and these guys are the big brothers, and, and the big brothers are always making sure we're looking over another. It has always been helpful. Um, yes, central government will come in and assist mm -hmm. you because that's their job. No. No, 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 no um, central government will want to see their council struggle and do, not doing the right thing. So it's a combination of all of us coming together. And I, and I wish for all our other municipalities to do the same. When, the, when we do this kind of vision, we can work and we can do more. The, the residents will benefit from it by mm -hmm. getting all the works done, more streets being paved, the garbage being picked up to time. The town is clean and beautiful, what they expect from us. How much then of an advantage is it that the Prime Minister actually operates within <laughs> the municipality that you lead? It, it's a plus, it's a huge plus. Why? Let me tell you. I've told you earlier prior to that I'm, I'm very close to the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. I do most of his work and 
as, as, as Prime Minister, he doesn't have the time to be traversing inside his constituency. So he depends on the Rinjok Town Council to do his work. And what we do prior to getting these work, then we would walk around to see what work he's doing. He is willing enough to give some of his money to, to the Town Council personally to make sure his, the, mo the works get done for him. And I, and, I, and I applaud him for doing that because at the end of the day, like I said, we are working closer together. Um, Prime Minister um, Rosteno is a nice person, like I said, and he sees fit that doesn't have the time. So why, why, why um, not work with the Jock Town Council so that we can get the job done together as a team? And like I said, right there, the sports community, we're a team, we're working together as one. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about um, uh, what took place yesterday. And this was a question that was posed to uh, Mr. Carbayo as well. We saw numbers on both sides. Um, and uh, one of the questions that we posed was, as it relates to the Orange Walk municipality, do you believe that what took place with the cane farmers last year and earlier this year, year will affect the outcome of the upcoming municipal elections? No, I don't think so. Most of the skin farmers are in, are in my constituency in Central, in the East, and in, and in, in the North. I guess it goes back to what I'm saying mm -hmm. as a mayor. My job is to make sure we pave streets, um, clean the drain, make sure the municipalities happy with what we're doing. These people um, have their issue, the Prime Minister and Honorable um, Mai has solved this issue with them, so they don't have any problem with what we're doing. So I don't think so. And I've been in the campaign trail talking to the people I have. No one has ever mentioned any, anything like that prior yeah. to. I know that the, 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 you will be hearing some noise about it, but again, once you can solve the problem, leave it to the local government to do that, then we as a, as a, as a, as a, as a government to do our, our, our part, it is cool and nobody will be yeah. explaining and asking any question about uh, the cane farmers. These people are already working and the work goes on for them. Yeah. What are the concerns aside from streets and drainage that you've been hearing from the people while on campaign? Well, Orange Walk wants, we, we need to continue doing the work for them. Um, I, I, there's pictures that I've shown you that we have invested for them. Got in there. Remember, we, were, um, we wanted to make sure that Orange Walk shines and outshines everybody. I, I've always said that and, and like I said, I have that mentality that, that we are number one. Being number one, you have to continue doing work. There is projects that I've, that, that I've invested in. When you drive in a range rock, there was a playground in the park that was never there. And that gives, I went, when, when I went in and I placed that playground in the park, I had the mentality that there was a school right beside the, 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 the park, um, Central Park, which is Lama Colada. Mm -hmm. So the parents had to be, remember you have two child. You have one in the infants and you have one in, in the bigger upper class, than four, standard five. So meanwhile, at 2.30 when you could pick up your child at the infant class and you want to wait for the one, you can have a, a place, safe place. You can have your child playing a little while and then wait for the other bigger child to come home. Mm -hmm. That's it. So in that aspect, again, if you can, if you can watch our manifesto for 2024, 2027, we're going to be doing another park, which there is another school, St. Peter's School, which is right center of the town as well, too, which do not have a place set for their, for their students, and we want to make sure that we in, invest on that. So having that, then there's at the, bar, the section we call the barracks in our manifesto shows that there's a lot of vendors there that, that, that has small tents and things. We want to make sure that when, when these people go outside, they, they are happy with what they are doing because they're not asking you for any money. They are selling their own goods. Mm -hmm. So we, ask, we are doing a market expansion so we can have these things on. So these are the things that people expect this Orange Rock Town to step up. Apart from the drains and the streets and things, we need to make sure that the, the residents of Orange Rock are happy that they can do their, their, their business and they can go on with their lives. That, that speaks to economic development. And that's where I wanted to take the conversation just for a bit to ask, what are the focus of, uh, focuses of your uh, leadership when it comes to economic development in uh, Orange Walk? Well, I've told you already, if you can glance on our manifesto for 2024, 2027, there is a new bus terminal on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the streamline. We're doing a cemetery. There is a new cemetery that we're building, the market expansion, um, the youth, youth center there at um, the barracks. Um, we're going to be enhancing as the, the main street to, so that we can have that. So, so those are some, just some of the stuff that we're doing. And these are consultations that we're having because we know for a fact, heading to the next term, it's like preparing for a game. You all make sure that you prepare from now so that when you enter, when you enter, you are set and ready. So these are consultation IDB, and these projects are basically set. So we're working closer with the central. 
central government again you cannot have these big infrastructure work if you don't have people making sure that they're beside you so working closer with, with the prime minister in his, his in his section so that we can have this so like i said it's 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 basically said you just have to make sure you do your part and then it'll trickle down with the central government having your back mm -hmm. how how uh, confident are you that the residents of Orange Walk will remain, uh, will maintain their support for you in the, on March 6th? Well, I've always said again, guys, it's, it's, it's the work, that, 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 that working mentality that I have, that, that poise that I'm going out there to get it done. You know, people have, have always asked, and, and I've always been a nice person, an approachable person. That, I don't know that, you know, the opposition say I'm not approachable. I'm always, I walk to my work. I don't drive to work. I walk and I stop and talk to residents and, and, and get a feedback from them. I've always been there. I've, I've, I'm always at all sporting a, 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 events, football games, and these are what people want to hear. Like I said, just the, uh, just um, as I was talking out there to Sosa, I know his son plays basketball. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm on um, CT, um, CTV3 announcing basketball game for the Rebels game. So the, people are hearing your voice and they're seeing you. If I say politics, you don't have a life in politics, you know. Mm. But it's what it is what drives me, and and I think I serve the best party, the PUP party, and that's what want, kind of pulled me to continue doing what I'm doing because I'm serving the people. It's a job. If I if I didn't have that mentality that I wanted to do good for the Orange Rock residents, then I don't think I would be into politics. But that's what I want to do, and I continue doing good for the residents of Orange Rock. You know, one of the questions that I posed to Mr. Carbio was. Um, uh, the interest of young people as it relates to politics. Do you believe that young people are interested in uh, the leaders of the country, uh, both central and municipal? What are you hearing on the on the ground? It goes back to what you do for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, like I said, everybody knows me very good. I said I've been always been working with the youth. I have. I, I sent her. I, I sent you guys a picture of a of a basketball court which is centered at the. Um, it's called the, the hub of, of, of every, the entertainment section where high five is and all those, you know, the gym is. Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is a nice basketball which belongs to Sports Council. It doesn't belong to the, to the Turin Jock Town, it belongs to Sports Council. I went there about um, or nine months ago and um, I, I, I realized they were playing basketball game and these guys said, May I go on and you forget about we, but like I tell it's 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 kinda of a little tough and hard when you when you have to do all these things. Remember I told you earlier I'm the, I'm in charge of football, I'm the chairman in charge of football. Mm -hmm. So there is someone else also in charge of in charge of basketball game. Mm -hmm. So when I went there and I decided to put in some work, I revamped that whole entire place. But before getting there I had to talk to, to sports council to ask for the venue work along with the community. Honorable Kevin Bernard chipped in, the Prime Minister chipped in. I did my part as a council, and then we revamped that. I, I did a tournament, and man, it was amazing. Now, just three days ago, I was, walk, I was driving by, and I saw Louisiana School students using the facility, you know, the, 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 you know being in there. If you, if you do things for the youths, especially, I, if, I, if I would take you guys to walk and, and just walk through a range walk, you will see, the name Logic Mad Bull Shepherd rings a bell. People admire it. Like, it's not because you want to say that your name is good, but the work that you do, people remember you. Because I tell you, I really I own four football teams, mm -hmm. so I trickled down and I and I, people used to tell me, why you why are you to get kids and I only use the kids from a range walk. We get kids from villages. They would tell me this in, in they say, why are you getting a child way from San Felipe Village or August Marriage? These kids. We would, won't even vote. It's not about vote. It's about finding talent. When I go, I get the best players and put a team because you know I like wins. So <laughs> I get this, I, I'll get all the best players to put together. So these are the things that the youth want. If you can do more from them, you get more of them. I remember thing going back to tell them, man, pa, oh, you know who I'm going to play for? I'm going to play for Magic, Magic Mad Bull Shepherd team, and he did good. So you yeah. reflect back and they come back, and that's how you get the, the plus as a politician. I'll give you this opportunity to uh, uh, share your final thoughts with the people of Orange Walk and the people of Belize. This is your camera. Let them know why they should vote for you and your team come March 6th. Well, once again, thanks you guys for having me on the show. I, I want to say that um, I've always been working. I go back and, and, and say what I say. Hard work always pay off. Um, in the um, Orange Walk, Kenyans have known me as, as, as from, from young, that the capability what I have and the, and, the, and the team that I've placed together is a working team. I can tell you guys that we continue to work under the People's United 
party for the residents of Arrange Rock. I once again ask you to come out and support this PUP team because we will continue the work that we, we mentioned that we're doing and we're working closely with the central government with the chief air representative when we combine our work together we can get more done for you also on march the 6th vote for mad bull team thank you all righty we are going to take another quick break and when we come back we'll be speaking to dara robinson about an event taking place next month stay with us we'll be right back